Greetings and welcome back, Mountaintop, with our E Church family and friends around the world. Take a moment, please, tonight again and share this class with someone. Get your family and friends to come close to your, your devices or, or your, your computers or your TV and listen to the lesson tonight as we move further, further in our theme for June, Dream Big. I pray something we said on last week kind of motivated, stretch, and uh, um, um, inspired you to want to just pick back up what God has put in your heart, those dreams, those aspirations. And I pray that some of the points that I gave, that um, you caught them in the sense of imagining yourself in a new place, doing great things and doing great exploits, and begin to feel that imagination come into fruition in your life. Some of you are already there. You're doing great things. But I think still there's more for God to do in you and through you. Someone said the sky is the limit, but dreaming big says there are no limits. Let's pray tonight. Father, we thank you for your grace tonight. You allow us again to come and share this word and this thought. I pray that you would breathe on it, speak life to it today, tonight for us. In the name of Jesus, let it build us and strengthen us for kingdom purposes, for our families and for our personal lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Dream big. Um, I want to go to the to the dreamer that we all know about in the Bible, in Genesis 37. We'll pick him up over there, and his name is is Joseph. He is the dreamer. Um, he has a lot of great things to say to us, and more is mentioned about him in the Bible than is about Abraham, because Joseph, we understood, is the one that that the Lord was going to breathe on that God adds to. He also is is the one that is a type. To, to Jesus Christ. Dreaming for, of greatness, what Joseph was doing in Genesis 37. <clears throat> he was dreaming of greatness. He dreamed of a future exaltation, uh, but he did not see the humiliation. So dreaming big has something connected to it. It's exaltation, bigger, higher, larger, but there's also humili humiliation. And most times the, the humiliation comes before the exaltation. Um, I'm going to jump in in Genesis 37 and verse 8 through 11. And the Bible says, his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even the more for his dreams and for his words. Then the dreamer, then, then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers. And he said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars are going to bow down to me. Genesis 37, verses 8 through 11. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and your brothers indeed come and bow down, and I come down and bow down, before, down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in his heart. You see it in the context. He's hated and then he's eventually envied by his brothers. Joseph, Jehovah has added or let him add to your life. I want you to see in this 37th chapter in verse 5, this dreamer, Joseph in verse uh, 5 of the 37th chapter, at 37th chapter Genesis, he's only 17 years young. And He's telling this to his fathers at 17 and his mothers and his brothers about the dream that God had given him and how God was going to elevate him and they all were going to bow down to him. You can see why they hated him. He's 17 years old and telling them that all y'all are going to bow down to me. They just hated him. The hate here was a dislike. When you have dream and God has given you a big dream, expect haters not throwing off. I'm just looking at the text here. Everybody's not going to like you because you're not going to fit into the mold or in, in the norm or into the box, even though you grew up in a lowly place or a very small environment or a very, around a very uh, non-productive family when it comes to the progress of life. They hated him. They disliked him. Watch this. And then he went on to tell them more about this dream. And the Bible says they envied him. Now here comes jealousy. And jealous people are dangerous people because they want what you have, but they can't have it. So they become jealous of because they realize that God is going to bless your life and they can see it happening. 
yeah, I don't want to go down that road. Um, jealousy will get you nowhere. You might as well go on and celebrate and don't hate because what God has for that person is for that person, and they have to carry the weight of it. And note the text again in Genesis in this 37 chapter in verse 11, I think it is, uh, in there. But the father kept this thing in his heart. He, he held on to what Joseph had said. He, he looked at this boy like maybe this boy got something because he knew that he loved Joseph. And he was the one he gave the coat to that represents his love, uh, the love of the father for Joseph. But here we go. Genesis 41 and verse 46, Joseph now is 30 years of age. 13 years he held on to this dream. You, you've tracked the story several times, I believe, if you're a Bible reader. But he's going through 13 years of pure drama. I mean, pit, prison, palace, lied on, talked about, forgotten about in a hole, in a pit, but 13 years, but he kept that dream in his heart and that dream came to full fruition. All dreamers will have to go to the pit before the palace, you know that. Before elevation, there will be devastation. There will be humiliation before exaltation. People look at us, us in this ministry right now, myself, Dr. House and our family and the church and you that are members of Mountaintop, they see where we have come to, but we're not at the end of what God showed me from my tender of ministry. And some don't like the fact that we've come to this for, by God's grace and by his faith. We've not been perfect along the journey. We've had ups and downs. But when God has given you something, his blessings make it rich, added no sorrow. The gifts and the callings are without repentance. I'm not taking it back. And I'll keep working through you. It'll be, it's more heavier to carry when you're making owies and mistakes along the way, but the dream never dies inside of you. The Egyptians believed this, that everyone had prophetic dreams. But the real skill was the interpretation of dreams, and that's what Joseph had. He had the skill to interpret dreams. Joseph was also a special, special person because he could see the dreams that were being spoken. The butler and the baker, he told them about their dream and got them out of prison, but he's still in prison. Joseph's mistake, I might say again, may have been that he began to brag about what God has showed him. Oh, you're going to bow down to me. You're going to serve me. I'm going to be the greatest. I don't know his attitude that he was working through, but God had to work through him to get him prepared to carry the dream. God will exalt you, but he'll humble you first. Hence why I don't see the grandeur of some people that want to be all of that. I know that you know what I'm teaching tonight. You might be there but you're carrying a whole lot of humility on the inside. So don't overshadow it. Walk in humility. God resists the pride, proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Joseph had to learn through character before he became a leader. God will work on your character. Although Joseph had to endure a lot of hardships, we said about that, but God elevated him and became Joseph the second in command. Um, don't worry about what's what is delaying you, what's stopping you, or stopping your progress. Don't worry about that. But prepare yourself for the catapult, that how God's going to shoot you forward. I, I didn't bring my rubber band. I want to have a rubber band, but if you ever played uh, uh, with a rubber band and you put a piece of paper in it and pulled it back and let it go, boom, the paper's going to flip over across something. It's going to go across the room. And the further back you pull the paper, the further the, 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 pull, pull the rubber band, I'm sorry, the paper's going to go. And God has been holding some of you back and working on your character, developing who you need to be. So when you get to where he wants you to go and the grace and the dreams he put inside you, you'll know how to walk humble and you will not look at the apprentice and look down on them. How dare them? They are, they're so silly. How come they couldn't do that? You didn't know how to do all of that. But over time, God trained you. Be patient with people. Because dreams are built and they're forged with people. You need people to get the job done. So God's going to shoot you forward and is going to put you in a catapult to where you're supposed to be and hurry up and get you to your place of dreaming, 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 and fulfilling those dreams. I've seen God fulfill many things in my life. Oh, my God. Going from small of nothing and then being increased to greatness, I've seen God do it over and over again. Going from a carpenter to a preacher of the gospel, just over and over again. Coming from just an employee to now becoming a businessman and learning how to be a business operating and owner. 
when I first started getting our first employees at the church, we were, we were in, I think in the high school, we were down in uh, Sahara and, um, and Lindale. We were in one of the executive suites down there, a little, little strip mall area. And it hit me one day. I walked in and said, wow, I'm, I'm an employer. And these people are looking to me to make sure they get paid every week. And um, we are non-profit. Yeah, go write that down and figure that out. So there's certain things that I had to just watch myself and how I act and how I moved and how I went about because I didn't want to destroy and blow it all up. Um, the insurance guy came. He says, well, I got this policy here uh, with, with uh, uh, what it was, it was New York Life, New York Life. So I can give you a million dollar policy to make sure everything is covered and protected. But you can't jump out of an airplane. You can't ride a motorcycle. You can't do any dangerous sports. I said, then what am I going to do then? How can I live? I can't. You have to realize that you now become the person that has to have people's lives at your stake. That's a heavy weight to carry that you're looking at people's livelihoods and you got to make sure things are there to take care of them because they're helping your dream come to pass and move it to fruition. So God has done great things and gave us great people around me to do what they do that I don't have to do so we can keep building and seeing the dream come to pass. I do not care, and God does not care how big your dream is. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. So Pharaoh told every woman that came to him in Genesis 47, said, you guys are looking to me about what Joseph had interpreted about the seven, day, seven years of good, seven years of lean. He said, just go to Joseph. Whatever he says, do, do that. And, and the text goes on to say how Joseph took 5%, put it away, and, and at 5% of the corn and the land now becomes, in the good times, becomes what they lived on in the bad times. Every business owner, every personal dreamer, when you dream to obtain something and get something, now you have to make sure you put some things to, si to the side so when time comes that's lean, ups and downs happens. Remember, the ax head fell in the water. You still can maintain it and do not lose the value of your dreams. I believe some of you tonight is listening to me that God's going to use to be distribution centers for the kingdom of God. You're going to be world changers and world helpers because God can, you know, God knows that you can add value to people's lives. Remember, God is bigger than any thoughts, any of our thoughts and imagination. He can do more than we can ever ask or think according to the power that's at work with inside of us. It's, it's, it's not in into the hearts of men the things God has prepared for us that love him. It's not even begin to begin to imagine what God's going to do for a person that's dreaming about doing greater. But it's revealed to us, the Bible said, by the Spirit. Just because someone or things have dreams or imaginations and they're not been fulfilled yet, they have not come into fruition, they're not entered into the earth realm as of yet, it does not counsel what God has said that he's able to do. God will bring it to pass because faith by faith, it is being manifested even right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Dream big, dream big, dream big. You may not see it again manifested as just yet. Some of your dreams have not come to fruition yet, but keep on dreaming. With God, yesterday's impossibilities are today. Today's miracles with God. Yesterday's impossibilities are today's miracles. What's impossible with man is possible with God. Mark 10, 27 says it like this, with God, all things are possible. God specializes, my mom used to say, God specializes, she still said, in things that seems impossible and he can do what no other power can do. He is our father and we are his children and there's nothing too hard for our God. Pray this prayer with me as we move on in this lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you settle my spirit, anchor my thoughts in your word. Help me to trust and believe that you are my shepherd and that you have supplied all that I need and all I want. Holy Spirit, lead me, guide me into the fullness of your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Let that prayer be a prayer that you lock in on. Go back and listen to it in the, in the message, and you can hear it again. 
Today, I'm inspiring lives, giving and raising above the base, to, to, to give you a reason to raise above the baseline. Realizing that life is full of pain and, and trouble. Uncertainties can happen at any moment. Therefore, I must prepare and be ready to pivot at any moment God needs me to move and go higher. See, if I'm dreaming big, I have something in my arsenal I can reach for and be prepared to go for it when God says move. If not, I'm going to be caught up in the pains and toils of life that are happening all the time. I akin it to Ecclesiastes 11 and 2. He says it in the NIV. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, even in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land, what evil or hard times will come. Something's always happening. So you got to diversify and outlay six, seven, and eight. But don't do six, seven, and eight ventures and you don't do one right. A master of many, but not a master of one. Something like that. Uh, jack of all trades, but a master of none. Find what you're good at and stick to it. I'm ready to go higher is what I'm saying. I know it's going to take effort. It's going to take getting up, going above the average. To live average, to acquire average blessings are the many things a believer can do. But this does not have to stop there. You have incredible faith with God. You have a tenacity of spirit, a hunger and a thirst for the things of God to break the ceiling of average. An average mentality kills productivity and invention. Average is good enough. Let's move on. Working with the average mindset limits the intent that your mind can get to and go to. Don't keep saying it's good enough unless it's good enough. Stretch it a little bit more. Get an attitude that I want it to be as best as it can be. I want the spirit of excellence to rest upon me. Watch, we're going to get to that in a moment. We tend to feel un uh, comfortable with the crowd, and that actually dampens our potentials. The potentials are what you're going to be. Without ever becoming aware of it, avoid comparing yourself to average. Go above the baseline. Fast, the fastest way to stop being average is to recognize the possibilities to, of living with courage and taking action in the directions of your dreams. It's your dream, not an average dream. Giving yourself permission to pursue what's important to you. Don't just talk about it. Be about it. Don't just do things and try a thousand things, but don't add anything to your value of your life. Don't do, keep doing a whole lot of things. Fine, and stick to something that works and work it. There are many people who says, says when I grow up, I just want to be average. I don't think there's anyone that says, when I grow up, I want to be average. No, it's in all of us to want to be the best version of ourselves. I believe that we all are created with a capacity for more. However, question is, am I willing to do what it takes for more? Can I live above the baseline? Can I walk with God with an intense life of courage, reaching a greater love for him and stretching my faith towards him? Can I take the steps of obedience to his word? Yes, I can, but I have to want to do that. Getting what God has for me requires effort, tenacity of spirit, it's that Jacob experience, an attitude that Jacob in the Bible says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. I have to believe that God has more for my life. You have to put that in your spirit. God has more for my life. As long as I'm breathing, living, and on the planet, God has more for my life. We all used to we all used to seeing a principle of a seed. We all know the principle of a seed's time and harvest. We sow the seed, we plant it, not just physically often, but in the lives of people. And we wait for some time and reap the harvest. Seed, time, harvest. But there are some times if you're dreaming about the things God wants to you want God to do in your life, there are some times when God takes time out of the equation. 
Genesis 26, and Isaac tells us about this in verse 12 to 14. It, it says, and Isaac sold in the land and received in the same year 100 fold or 100 times more. The Lord blessed him. He favored him. Genesis 26, and, and in that verse 12, 13 to 14, and the man waxed great. He went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herb, herbs, of stock, and a great store of, of servants. He says his whole life was one that God just progressed. But I want you to see this in Genesis uh, 26 and verse 14. And it says, and the Philistines envied him. Whenever your life began to become pros progressive and you're dreaming about more, you reach, but everybody can do this, expect to not be liked and jealousy will come. Sometimes within your own family, God forbid. But you have to keep dreaming and keep moving forward. I pray that you get to see and experience the incredible things God has for you that allows you to reap 100 times more even in this season. What does dream big looks like for me? I'm almost closing this tonight. Well, I don't look at the standard of success. I create one. I don't measure myself by somebody else. That's what you have to do. That's what God called you to do. I create my own success. Success is the reward of endurance. It just doesn't happen by accident. It's by doing. It's getting up early in the morning and staying up late at night. You have to work it. Success is the opposite of what other people just talk about and dream about while you are being about it. But if you focus on success, you will have stress. But if you pursue excellence, success will come. God sees you faithful over the few things and you make sure you keep it up. I'll then make you ruler over many. Success, I'm going to be the work on time. I'm not going to leave right at 5 o'clock. I'm going to stay around at least for three minutes past the hour. I'm going to come early and leave a little late. I want to move in a spirit of excellence. I will never be on time again. I will always be before time. God challenges us in everything that we do, people of God. And he's testing us to see you're dreaming bigger, but what are you going to do with what you have right now? I don't settle for less, talking about me now, than the dreams and the promises that has been and the plans that God has for me. I don't accept limitations of my past mistakes. I learn from them, I recover from them, and I move forward. Should I say that again? I don't accept the limitations of my past mistakes. We all have them. I learn from it, I recover from it, and I move forward. The best way to stop tripping over your past is to stop walking backwards. Dream big. The scripture says it in Isaiah 43 in verse 18 through 19. The Lord says, remember not the former things. I forget going over and over the former things and complaining about what was. And start moving forward. Go forward with your life. For I am doing a new thing and it's happening even right now. I execute my decisions with prayer and confidence. I don't have to lie, cheat, manipulate, or push anyone out of the way. When God has something, something for me and wants to promote me, he opens the door and I just walk into it. What does dreaming big looks like for me? That I don't give out of fear, out of manipulation. I listen to the voice of God. Give to this person, give to that person, so here, so there. And in those places he says so, I expect the harvest to come back because wherever he says so, it has to be good ground, ground that's going to bring forth that harvest. I refuse to lie. Let, I, I refuse the lies of the enemy that, may, that my life has achieved all it can. I yet believe I am anointed for success. Me. I don't know about you, but here's what I do in dreaming big and seeing things in my life growing. I'm just getting started. Dreaming big means that sometimes I will have to walk away for seasons, walk in seasons alone, 
like Joseph did. Sometimes I have to be by my, in my own environment and trusting God through the process and realizing that he's my shepherd. He will never leave me, but he's taking me through the season of isolation for elevation. That's what God does. When you start dreaming, he moves that dream out of the circle of anyone else's influence and you focus completely on him. I hope you're tracking with me and getting this tonight. Sometimes I will have to, I have to encourage myself and tell myself you're doing a good job. Keep going forward. Greater is he that's in you. With God on your side, you're going to win. You're unstoppable. Keep moving forward. I'm anointed to finish. There's been some d doubts. There's been some, some wonders in my mind thinking if I'm going to get there, but I'm anointed to finish. If, with God on the road and getting you there, you're unstoppable because you are anointed to finish. My dreams are blessed. My seed is blessed. My life is blessed. My plans are blessed. My actions of obedience towards God, it's blessed. He told Peter them when he was sailing with them on a boat, he says, in Luke 5, I want you to dream about what's going to happen. Launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a great draught of fish. Peter says, we've done fishing all night and taken nothing. You're familiar with the story, but I want to track this down to you. They had been fishing all the time, all night and taking nothing. But Peter says, nevertheless, at thy word, dream big, God, at your word, go after God's word, go after your dreams. The Bible says that Peter them enclosed a great draught, a great multitude of fish. So many fish, that the blessing began to sink the boat and they had, could not haul it in and had to call for help. Dream big. Here it comes. Lord, I'm dreaming about a net breaking, boat sinking, calling for help blessing. Do you see that? When you dream big, it's going to be bigger than you. If you can do it, then maybe it's not God. When you can't do it, then you know it is God. Yes, I believe this is your season of increase and expansion. I decree tonight my dreams are being manifested before my eyes. My life is being filled with joy and abundance. I am a magnet for prosperity, innovations, and creativity. Everyone that's connected to me is going to be blessed. Dream big. Beloved, I hope you get these lessons. Go over them again. Let them play out in your heart and mind. Listen to some of the intricate things that I'm speaking to you about as we dream big, not out of greed, but out of promise. God promised you he's able to do Ephesians 3, 20. Exceedingly above, all abundantly above all, you can ask to think according to the power that works within you. So let that power regenerate and re-mobilize and move again and stir up inside of you. Let that generator of the spirit begins to turn and let God do great things in your life. The people that know their God will be blessed and do great exploits. Father, in the name of Jesus, now go with us. Strengthen us as we move forward and we stretch beyond the average and become the extraordinary for your glory. God bless you, beloved. We'll see you real soon.